Hello everybody. So I'm thinking it's the time of year that um, when I go home today after work for my dinner with the church people that um, this average coat will be retiring and I'll be bringing back over my electric coat. Um, I brought this one initially because it wasn't really that cold and I have so much <laughs> stuff over here. It's like I live here because I kind of have been for months now. Um, but I'm everything is slowly migrating over here. It was just one more thing is gonna have to bring back. And um, I didn't realize it'd be so bitterly cold so fast. Um, but it has been. So um, we might go to the cider mill next weekend if all things work out copacetically and everyone in the household feels well enough. Um, and I'm definitely going to want a heated jacket for that because we are now uh, bitterly cold. So um, I'll be bringing back my electric jacket. And um, it's amazing how quickly things change. <laughs> Temperature, health, uh, relationships. Uh, change happens abruptly. Sometimes change happens really slowly and incrementally, so much so that you don't notice the change. Often if you allow change to happen naturally, like passively, and just allow whatever will be will be, or be indecisive, change is going to occur over time. Things are going to be different. It just might be like watching your own hair grow so slowly that you don't even notice anything is changing until you see someone who hasn't seen you for a while and they say, wow, your hair has gotten long. And you didn't even notice anything was going on because you were too close and it was so slow of a change. That's when you're passive, or you could be more aggressive. You could be more action oriented and more decisive and make strong, bold moves in your life toward a change. Um, that will cause the ship to turn rather dramatically, rather quickly. <laughs> uh, life can throw things at you and turn the ship for you. And oftentimes, if we take that passive approach too much, uh, life will step in and something will explode and turn the tide dramatically um, in the end anyway. Uh, we were just trying to outrun the inevitable. Oftentimes, uh, when we hang on to toxic people, dead relationships, dead situations, uh, bad behavior, things that we... Uh, have long since grown out of and that are no longer good for us. We know, we know it, um, but we fear the unknown and we fear the change more than um, the familiar hell. So we remain passive and we remain in those situations because we fear the unknown and the uncertainty and we don't feel safe. Um, especially if you experience childhood trauma, uh, if you are a victim of uh, emotional neglect or abuse or trauma, um, you may seek safety and security above all else, even if the situation you're in is not really that safe or secure anymore, but it's familiar and you know what to expect. And it's an unconscious reliving of behaviors that you did when you were young to survive. The situation was not safe nor secure, but it was familiar. And so you kept quiet and you went along with it, not willingly, you just floated along and allowed it to happen because you, you were uh, in a position where you had no power or authority to do anything but that in your family of origin when you were a child. Um, and even later on into your adolescence, victimizations of um, trigger warning, sexual assaults and things like that where you were powerless, um, discrimination. Uh, stigmatization, losses of health, um, 
catastrophes like uh, serious accidents and injuries or house fires and um, anything that we go through in life that just um, destroys us. Uh, and we feel we're powerless over these situations. We can only choose how we react and respond. We, we can't, we, we do have no control over them. Um, and they, they change everything and they traumatize us and they make us afraid to make any changes. Um, and we get stuck in this habitual pattern of uh, clinging um, to situations and behaviors that are no longer serving us, that are dead to us, um, that are actually holding us back. So when you look at your life, when you look at your behavior, when you look at your friends, when you look at your hobbies, when you look at how you spend your time and where you spend your money, because how you spend your time and where you spend your money will tell you what your priorities are if you're uncertain, what you're, you prioritize. Where you invest is what you prioritize. An investment is your attention, your time, your energy, and your finances. Those are all investments. Who are you giving that to? What are you giving that to? Your time, your energy, your emotional, cognitive energy, and your finances. And like I said, if you're, if you're a little unsure what that is, break down your money. Follow the money and look at how you spend your day. Track yourself for a week and see where your hours go. And that will tell you what you prioritize. And you may not like what you see. You may not even realize so much time or so much energy or so much money was going to a certain thing or a certain direction or a certain person. And you may need to reorient things. That's why I suggest to uh, recheck <laughs> like a spring cleaning of your priorities because uh, people change, we change, circumstances change. And again, you're in it, so it's like watching your own hair grow, you don't realize um, this year has flown by. Everybody says so. It's amazing. We're almost, it's, it's almost over. Uh, we're already almost to winter, um, which will last halfway through next year. Blah. <laughs> but um, that too will change. Um, it'll be done and it'll be over, um, even though it felt like it went on forever. Uh, it will, it'll change and you'll change and circumstance will change. And if you're not paying enough attention, if you're not checking in with yourself, um, you can quickly um, unwind <laughs> and lose um, things that were good for you. Uh, they will fall away because uh, the bad habits, the bad attitudes, the bad mindsets, it's unfortunate that this is true in life, but everything bad for you comes easily like weeds in a garden. They just grow. You don't have to do anything. They'll grow through cracks in the sidewalk. Wherever they find space, uh, it could be, you know, a desert and a weed will find a way. You don't have to do anything to make the weeds grow. You don't have to do anything to lose your good habits, to lose your good friends, to uh, lose yourself in a, in a toxic relationship, to lose your time and energy to people pleasing or bad the bad things to lack of self-care, to, to lack of filling your own cup, um, to, to abandon your hobbies and things that brought you joy. Um, you, you don't have to, to do anything. That'll happen all by itself if you're not being attentive. So periodically check in, <laughs> like spring cleaning, and see if uh, your investments, where you spend your time, energy, uh, emotional, cognitive energies, actual time and energy, sweat equity, and your money matches what you really want to prioritize in your life and what you think you're prioritizing <laughs> or have you changed and has the circumstances changed like me with my health. Um, dramatic changes, uh, forced changes. And I have sort of just been along for the ride. I have been too sick. And it's too early in the process. Yes, it's been for years, but um, uh, 
coming to grips with a chronic illness diagnosis is a very long, complex process. Doctors don't, it's not like on TV. Um, you're given a diagnosis and then they lay out everything for you and explain how it all works and then they track you and make sure all your numbers are good and work with you until you see improvement and explain everything as it goes. No, that's not how it works. You're given a, a, a life altering diagnosis when you finally actually are able to get one because you know your life has been dramatically changed from your uh, physical issues or your psychiatric issues. And uh, you know it's debilitating your life, something is wrong, you eventually, eventually get a name for it. And that gives you with an iota of hope because if there's a name, there can be a plan. And you're given little less than that appointment to where you're diagnosed, a little rundown, like Wikipedia of what uh, that illness is, what that diagnosis means, and you're left to fend for yourself, uh, uh, to learn for yourself, to research for yourself, to figure out yourself what that diagnosis actually is, how it operates, how it operates in you, because each individual body responds differently to the same illness, responds differently to the same medications. Um, it's very complicated. So first you have to come to terms and learn the illness yourself. And then you have to um, learn and play around and mad scientist yourself and test and hypotheses all these different treatments and medications and ways of eating and ways of living and see if they make a difference or not. Uh, you dabble and you learn and it takes a long time all the while you're modifying your life uh, because uh, a life with an illness with a chronic um, severe illness physical or mental uh, modifies what your life uh, is shaped like and if you are frequently or constantly experiencing symptoms you're doing all this sick um, where you are not in a position to be doing much. Uh, imagine operating a regular adult life with uh, severe flu and um, you're on all sorts of cold meds so your brain's all fogged up and screwed up and you have to do all the normal adulting, your, your taxes, your house payment, your childcare, your, your schoolwork, your, all, all that stuff that we do, that we gotta do, society says we gotta do that stuff. And, You've got to now learn, like you're going to medical school, about what the hell is wrong with you and how you can adjust your life so it, it's more functional than it is now because that's what brought you to the doctors to begin with for that diagnosis. It's because your life had become dysfunctional because of your illness, your difficult circumstances, your, uh, your mental health. And you have to figure that out on your own um, how to change, what to change, how to adapt. Um, because you adapt or you die. <laughs> you know, you're dead in the water. Uh, you cannot hold up the same life you did before. That's why you needed a diagnosis. That's why you need the treatment. That's why you need the help. Um, because you're no longer capable of it, at least at this moment in time. So you have to then spend time simultaneously, trial and error, uh, modifications and different sleep schedules, different different foods, different medications, different, different things at different times to see if it's helping you or it's hurting you and tracking all that and um, hypotheses and theories and testing on yourself and learning how it works in you while learning how it works in general while doing the rest of life while being too sick to do life, which is why you went for the diagnosis to begin with. And if you're super lucky, you've got something that's permanent, incurable, potentially without treatment, no formal treatment plan. Even if you had a great doctor, there is no treatment plan. Um, there is no cure. <laughs> There's you know, there's half the medical community or the psychiatric community is skeptical about the disorder anyway. 
and then you're talking about the lay public and you're dealing with stigma and it just gets really complicated really fast. And so a lot can happen really fast. A lot of change can happen really fast. And you can either be the recipient of that change and sometimes in life you'll be forced to be the recipient of that change. Uh, like I have been with my physical health. Uh, and uh, it is a lengthy process. Even if you take bold, decisive action, I'm gonna educate myself about my disorder. I'm gonna figure out how it works in me. I'm gonna try and change things and modify things to, to have my best quality of life possible. Um, I'm going to uh, aim for improvement without losing sight of the possibility of cure so that I'm not eternally crushed and disappointed with every test and procedure and new prescription that I still feel just as bad um, as I did before, uh, that this is never gonna go end and you go to the dark night of the soul. Um, it's always gonna end, Some something is gonna change, at least even if it's permanent, it, it, it has ebbs and flows. Um, the, the point of this is, um, we underestimate <laughs> uh, what can happen in a year. We severely underestimate what can happen in a decade. And we overestimate what can happen in a day. We push ourselves, even when it's not the right time to be pushing ourselves or we're pushing ourselves toward the wrong things. We have misprioritized our life and we don't even know we're doing it because we're being unconscious. A big section of this channel is devoted to mindfulness and being present and aware and conscious in your life. Whether your circumstances are good or bad, whether they have changed dramatically and abruptly like mine have, or slowly over time, you allowed something and you've allowed something and you've allowed something and you know in the deepest corners of your mind that it's gonna blow up sometime but you have these um, habitual unconscious routines to seek safety and security and to fear change um, the familiar hell is preferable to the unfamiliar um, and the insecure and unsafe. Um, and so you allow, but you know, it's gonna blow up sooner or later. <laughs> do you want to just be in the explosion? Or do you want to um, have some say where the dynamite is laid? <laughs> so I highly suggest Resuggest um, paying attention to yourself for a week, finding out where are you investing, where is your time going, where is your money going, where is your energy going, to what and to whom, what are you doing to take care of yourself on all levels. What are you doing to address the biggest problem in your life? Are you actively doing anything to try to address the biggest problem in your life? Even if you're just where I am, um, learning. Learning and trying to adjust my former um, physically active life to a um, more suitable for my physical state life and still um, have the things I need to have, uh, like a roof over my head and health insurance. Um, trying to trying to make it work. Uh, you're just trying to make it work. Um, you're not gonna figure everything out overnight. Uh, when you decide to take the reins and make a conscious uh, sort of inventory of where you really are right now in life, what your biggest problem is, what your biggest Achilles heel is, what you're devoting your time, energy, 
cognitive, emotional, physical energy and finances too over the course of a day, a week. Just track yourself and find out. Um, does it meet what you really want? How far away is it from what you really want? And what do you need to change to get it to be what you really want? And focus not on the cure, <laughs> the grand finale, the destination. Life is a journey. It's not a destination because as soon as you hit a destination, you need another destination. And some things don't have an end. Chronic illness is with you always. It can only be managed and you will always have to manage it. You, congratulations, you've just got a new job that's completely unpaid and you work twice as long. <laughs> it's a full-time job with no pay uh, with a chronic mental illness or physical illness. Um, but you, you, you adapt. You don't have any other choice but to become embittered and stagnant and stuck in the pain and the trauma and the woe is me, why is me um, of the situation. It is what it is, what it is, what it is. Um, change isn't always pleasant, especially if we've been passive and we haven't been paying attention. Things, negative things can creep up on us um, and we didn't even see them coming. I prefer to see things coming as much as possible so I can do my best to ward them off at the pass. <laughs> so um, I highly suggest a little homework because things can change quickly. And it's very much preferable because they're going to change quickly or slowly, whether you do anything or you don't that you actively implore baby steps, reasonable steps, small, measurable, attainable, realistic and trackable, smart goals, small, measurable, realistic and trackable baby goals. You're not looking to climb a mountain. You're looking to uh, take the first step <laughs> up the stairs, one step at a time, uh, one day at a time, um, with the larger picture in mind, um, but don't focus on the larger picture, you'll be eternally disappointed, you'll, you'll feel like you're an eternal failure, just focus on doing that next right thing, um, and that's up to you to determine what that is for you, um, sometimes it's easier to figure out what we, um, need to say no to, what we need to distance ourselves from, than what we need to move forward towards. So if you aren't sure, you've tracked yourself for two weeks, you know where you're spending your time and your money and your energy um, and with what, for what, for whom, to whom, and uh, you realize some things are off balance in the way that you would like your life to play out um, that are within your control. Uh, you can begin to shift that to be more in line with your own morals and values, hopes and dreams um, by taking tiny baby actions every day. And it won't feel sometimes like you're getting anywhere just like watching your own hair grow because you're in the thick of it and you're doing such small little steps that you you won't notice the change unless you make one of those bombastic major changes rip the band-aid off and like you know one two rip uh like and quit your job or do something um dramatic um be careful when you make massive decisions that they are well thought out rational decisions that you are not making spontaneously or in the heat of a emotional moment. Make sure that you have definitely weighed the pros and the cons and uh, logically thought about this decision before you make a dramatic decision because change for the sake of change um, isn't uh, necessarily helpful either. It's just change. It's just like when you try to move to a new city to have some uh, 
life back in your life. Pretty soon that new city feels like the old city. You make a new group of friends because, you know, you need some life in your life, some vitality. And those new friends quickly feel like the old friends. Um, you take yourself with you wherever you go. You take your habits and behaviors and way of relating and way of being in the world with you wherever you go. Um, like Fight Club. <laughs> you know, you're looking for that punch in the face from outside to make you feel alive. And it really takes um, you working on your insides. Um, and making positive steps in your own life for you to feel alive. You need to feel proud of yourself. And if you're facing difficult times, difficult changes, you're feeling powerless, um, out of control, um, hopeless, uh, weak, fragile, um, targeted, victimized, all sorts of negative things that some of them may be true for the circumstance. You really owe it to yourself to be a little conscious and figure out exactly where you are in life right now by doing that uh, observation for a week or two and figure out what you're investing yourself into and see where that aligns with your morals and your hopes for given your current circumstances um, are and move consciously, inch consciously, daily, toward aligning those two um, to more of the life that you want um, and validate yourself, celebrate yourself every time you make a positive choice. You ever know, notice how, like I said, the weeds happen naturally? All the negative shit happens naturally. All the chocolate cake tastes great, broccoli tastes like, well, broccoli. <laughs> Uh, vegan me all you want, spice it up all you want, um, it tastes like broccoli. The good things are hard, they're not easy. And that's what's so sucky. The good things you have to think about, like growing a rose bush. You have to constantly be attentive, mindful, pour your time and your energy and your attention, your thoughtfulness into it and weed and water, you need to pull all the negative weed shit out of there on a daily basis, it needs sunlight, it needs water, it needs your attention, it needs your time um, to grow. The good stuff needs you to consciously choose to make it grow. Um, sometimes in life we, we dumb luck into some good things, but usually most good things are not luck. There are a lot of small conscious choices that accumulate over time. If our small conscious choices that accumulate over time turn out to be um, positive, we call them um, success. <laughs> uh, um, if they turn out to be negative, we call them consequences. Uh, but they're all results of small, tiny choices. Yes, if you're in a difficult situation, a lot of life has been taken out of your hands. Um, and there will be a lot of things where you're just going to have to um, observe, learn, learn about the situation, the other person, learn about yourself, um, figure out what is now. And... Um, how choose how you are going to respond to the situation. But there are areas that you can consciously decide to change, consciously decide to invest more time, energy, attention, finances into, etc., cetera, um, that will make you slowly feel good about yourself because as shitty as that broccoli tastes, as hard as that rose bush is to keep alive, um, when we neglect it and we get lazy, um, we get lazy and neglectful and we get weeds everywhere and we're swallowed up by, uh, a monster of crap, crappy behavior, crappy mindset, crappy crap. It just happens. Um, and it, it will swallow you quick, um, if you're not paying attention. So when your life is already difficult, 
that's the best time. It feels like I don't have time or energy to do anything healthy for myself right now. I feel like shit. I want comfort food and a blankie and a nap. Leave me alone about all this healthy, positive self-talk and all that crap. <laughs> I'm just trying to make it through a day. Trust me. I get it. Me too. I ain't thriving. I'm surviving. However, you ever notice when you choose that carrot stick over those Cheetos, you're like, Yay, I did something good for me today. You're all proud. You feel like you deserve a gold star. Uh, you get a little pick-me-up because you made that right choice. That self-esteem, true self-esteem, earned pride through making positive choices for yourself in life. And while you're feeling so powerless, so trapped, so small and so fragile, and so many things in your life are out of your control, Rather than bury it in social media, bury it in drugs and alcohol, bury it in uh, mad partying or whatever um, hedonistic instant pleasure thing that we're doing um, that is not helping us, try shifting a little bit of that compulsive shopping, <laughs> shifting a little bit of that time, energy, and money over towards little right choices little good for you choices and you know what those are you're smart you're grown up little good for your choices every day given your current situation and you will slowly begin to feel powerful again rather than a piece of driftwood caught in a tsunami of your life sometimes Life pulls the rug out from under you like it did for me. And you have to start all over again. And when the tide finally comes in, you're in a completely new world. <laughs> and the tide is finally coming in. I'm, I'm learning my bearings here in this uh, new world that I found myself in of chronic debilitating physical illness. Um, I'm just getting my bearings and I'm just understanding my disorders. Um, uh, that's, that's the best, uh, possible use of my time besides advocating and educating, which makes me feel purposeful, uh, as my life has shrunk a great deal. Uh, but I really do myself need to sit down and do this homework and just watch myself for two weeks and figure out what I do in a day and see if I could realign some things to be, um, better for me to be consciously led by me rather than just blindly stumble through the day and cross my fingers. I'm not very symptomatic and I can make it till bedtime. <laughs> you know, just uh, have some schedule back to my day. Um, some time set aside for those important things. Um, making right choices. Uh, where am I now? It, what is? What am I investing in? And does it align with what I want? And make the change. Make the change yourself. Little bitty changes. Little bitty carrot sticks over Cheetos. One choice at a time. You'll begin to grow in your self-assuredness, your sense of powerfulness and purpose and direction and self-esteem again. I gotta go to work. Is it time? Yeah, you're gonna be late. Okay. <laughs>